Today, you'll be learning how you can use MMAP, a network mapping tool that will allow you to scan devices within your own home Wi-Fi network, or possibly, let's say you go to a free Wi-Fi network like Starbucks, hotel Wi-Fi, the airport's Wi-Fi, and so on. And from there, you'll be able to detect all these different devices within a network and look for possibly entry points to give you access into those devices. I kid you not. At the same time, if you have Mr. Hackaloy as your neighbor, then what happens is that he may somehow gotten your Wi-Fi password and he is within your network so you'll be able to identify just that. Pretty cool, huh? Let's go ahead and get started. So right in front of us, we have Kali Linux running and over here, what you can see is that we can go ahead and open up terminal and I can zoom a little more so it's easier for you to see and all you got to do is enter nmap and from nmap, you can see all these different options that we can highlight here in order to run a scan against the network or against the target devices or websites. And you'll be saying, what if I'm on a Windows computer? In that case, what you can do here is you can go into Microsoft Store, go and enter Kali Linux in the search view and click under install. So once you have installed Kali Linux on your Windows computer, you will be able to then use Nmap to likewise scan all these different devices within the network or on the internet, over through the internet, using Kali Linux, using Nmap that is also likewise installed and available within your Windows computer. So right in the middle, you would have your own home router, all right, or possibly you're connecting through Starbucks, free Wi-Fi, and so on. And then, of course, on the right side, you would have your own computer. So your own computer could be a laptop. It could also be your mobile device where you have N map installed. And once you have that, as long as you connect to the network, you'll be able to scan the network, looking out for other devices within the network that you can then be able to look out for, say, does this have remote desktop protocol open? Does it have say SSH open? Does it have say a web server that is open up? So once you're able to discover all these different services, you'll be able to use subsequent tools or even scripts from MMAP to launch attacks against all these different connected devices. And yes, I know the Wi-Fi route that I'm drawing here looks like a TV. And not only that, let's say from your own personal computer, you'll be able to launch attacks against all these different sites across the internet Say, for example, you go to loyliangyang.com and then you launch an attack against the site, looking out for possibly different type of ports that open, say port 80, port 443, port 445, right, and so on and so forth, and see which one of them are open that you can possibly target with subsequent tools, like, say, Metasploit, like, say, brute forcing attack tools, and map scripts, and so on. And don't bother attacking Mr. Hacker Lloyd's website because I will find out your IP address. And remember kids, before we go any further, hacking is illegal. And when you scan a website using Nmap, when you scan another device using Nmap, many of these intrusion detection systems or firewalls will be able to pick up, hey, there is this IP address. They're running all the scans in our network. Let's go and find out who is this person. And if you get found out, that's it. It's game over for you. And the most important thing of all is, don't tell them that Mr. Hackalog taught you all this. All right, so use case number one, let's discover all network devices within say the Wi-Fi router that you connected over into. The first thing you can do is enter IP ADDR and from here you'll be able to uncover your IP address. So over here you have 192.168.0.117 slash 24. All right, so with that, we'll be able to go ahead and launch a scan against the network. So you can see over here with MMAP followed by dash SN. So this means no port scan. So this helped us speed up the scan against the entire network and then followed by over here 192.168.0.0 slash 24. So we are scanning. All right, all of the IP addresses within 192.168.0 and then dot one all the way to 255. So once you're ready for the scan, go ahead in three, two, one, hit enter. And right now we're scanning against all these different IP addresses. And right here, we can see which one of these devices are up and running. So you can see over here, we have the list. And from the list, you can see we have dot one is hosted up, 101110 and so on and so forth. So this help us identify all those IP addresses that we can potentially target later on. And from the list over here, what we can do is go ahead and target a specific IP address. So in this case, let's say we target 192.168.0.184. So you can see over here, we have the instructions of Nmap against the IP address. Of course, in the real world, you can also be targeting a specific domain name, say loyliangyang.com. So when you go ahead and hit enter on that, we're using the default settings that comes along with the default scan. 
And immediately from the default scan, we'll be able to see all these different services as well as its associated ports that are being open and the protocol of TCP and so on and so forth. So this help us understand what are the potential services that's open. So it's like a house, how many windows are open, how many doors are open that we can possibly have an entry point over into the device. However, that is typically not sufficient for us to launch an attack against the service. So what we need here is typically dash SV. This stands for service version. So what it does is that it helps us identify specifically what is the version of that service so that we'll be able to look up and see if there are any common vulnerability exposure or exploits that's available for us to target against that service. And once you're ready, go ahead in three, two, one, hit enter on that. And this will take a little longer because right now we're going deeper, we're probing deeper, we're enumerating deeper. So it takes a longer time for us to get those results. So hang on tight, get a cup of coffee and come back in a second. Boom, done. We now got the service version. So you can see right here, we got a lot more details than the one earlier. So over here, in this case, you can see OpenSSH 5.3p1, Apache, all right, 2.2.14, Corey, IMM, and so on and so forth. All right, the list goes on. So these are all the specific versions of the service that's running on that computer. So say, for example, we can use search exploit to search up, say, open SSH 5.3p1, which is the service version we uncovered earlier for port 22. When I hit enter on this, we can look up all of these potential exploits that we can use as part of launching the attack against that specific service. At the same time, we can also launch Metasploit so that from Metasploit, we can directly use a much more interactive option to gain direct access through the run of the exploit. So in this case, we're starting up the Metasploit framework over here. And what I can do is once more, I can do a search on OpenSSH. So I do a search OpenSSH, all right? And we can see over here, we have several modules that are available for us to use. So in this case, we have say a exploit windows, local auxiliary scanner, SSH enumerate users, and so on and so forth. So all this are also the other options that we can use against a specific service version. And we also have the option of using MMAP scripts to help us run say brute force attack against the login view of port 22, which is secure shell. So in this case, as you can see over here, we have the following of dash dash script ssh brood all right followed by the script arguments all right so in this case we have the user database and user database is pointing over into this common usernames.txt followed by the pass db all right in this case we also have the common passwords.txt and of course the script argument of ssh brute force timeout and of course finally with the target ip address and once you're ready in three two one hit enter on that and you can see right here, we're trying the username password pair to see which one gets us a hit. All right, I got some seriously bad news. We are not able to gain access to the service of secure shell through a brute force attack. So we have to use other methods. Now, before we go over to using other exploits, there's something really cool here that generates a report for us. So what you can see over here is we have Nmap as the network mapping tool, T5 for aggressive, and dash A is to use some of the default scripts, OS detection, and all these different options that's available for us, dash V for verbose, and then target network. So in this case, we are once again scanning across all the IP addresses and output into a network map XML file, which will then later convert so that we get a view, or a graphical view of what's going on across the network. So once you're ready in three, two, one, hit enter on that, well, this does take a while. We were scanning several hosts, we're scanning the pods, we're scanning using all these default options. So it takes a while. So in the meantime, go ahead and grab yourself, all right, 10 cups of coffee while we wait for the results. All right, so the scan has completed and we'll scan across all these IP addresses. And you can see over here, we have the results for each of the IP address, including all of this different version information. So what we can do now is we have to follow. So if you see over here on the previous command, we have the file of networkmap.xml. So if I go ahead and open up, say, Firefox network-map.xml, hit enter on that, it shows us the information over here, but it's pretty hard to read. It's not really human readable. So what we need to do then is, is there a way for us to convert it into a very beautiful format so that we can see exactly what's going on in a report format? So right here, we're using XSLTProc dot 
slash network map.xml followed by dash output network dash map.html. So we're converting this to a .html file. So all I'm going to do right now is again using Firefox, I'm targeting into network dash map.html, hit enter on that, and boom, you can see right here, we have really beautiful result format. So you can see all the IP addresses. And of course, if I zoom a little more, so it's easier for you to see, as I scroll down further, all right, we can see, okay, for this specific IP address, what are the open ports? Okay, and we can see the results over here, right? And I scroll down further, okay, we can see possibly other live hosts. Of course, we can always easily click to expand on them. All right, so these are the things that we can do right here. All right, so we got another one, our IP address 192.168.0.101. I can scroll down further and you can see some other interesting information over here as well. So we got the IP address of 192.168.0.110, right, port 8008, 8009, all right, 8443, and so on and so forth. So all this, are the different IP addresses that we have within the network. And you can easily do a scan like this in a cafe, in the airport lounge, at the hotel, and you'll be able to uncover all these different IP addresses that you can easily target later on, say, for exploit. And if you recall earlier, we were having our own computer over here, and we were running all these different scans against another possible devices across the networks and so on and so forth. And what happened then was that we had a list of all the services and the service versions that are running. However, we had to do a manual check. So we had to go over into search exploit. We had to go over into Metasploit. And then from there, we had to list all these different types of service versions and see whether there are exploits available for it. But what if within Nmap alone itself, we are able to get those results directly? That would save us a lot of time and a lot of trouble having to use multiple different tools. Why not just use one script, scan against the target device and be able to list out all those common vulnerability exposure possible exploits for it. And that would save us a lot of time and effort. And I'll be teaching you just that. So all we can do right now is ensure that we indicate dash dash script Vaughn. All right, so in this case, we're targeting a single port. So this is the single port we're targeting and seeing whether there are any possible vulnerabilities that we can go after. So you can see right here, we have completed the scan and we have found certain vulnerabilities. So we have a following of Apache Byte Range Filter DOS denial service attack. All right, so this is the CV number 2011-3192. All right, it's vulnerable to denial service attack when numerous overlapping byte ranges are requested. All right, we can also see that there is a HTTP trace is enabled. All right, internal IP leaked. All right, we have the HTTP cookie flags, cross domain policy, or right, cross domain and client access policies, vulnerable. And we also have the cross site request forgery, or right, spider spidering limited to max depth, and so on and so forth. So we have all this different information as well. All right, so we are uncovering all these vulnerabilities within the port 80 service. All right, so in this case, we also could look at the enumeration so we see there is a slash wordpress slash test slash mono php my admin so all these are the additional pages we have found within the site that we can go after all right so you can see over here potentially interesting folder with directory listing so it shows us the list of directories as available all right so we can see all this information directly from here and right here we can also use nmap to target specific services so in this case we're targeting port 139 445 using a script of smb os discovery enumeration of the shares and enumeration of users against another ip address so again we can use this for a set of ip addresses or a specific device so once you're ready hit enter in three two, one, hit enter on that. And we can see right here, we're able to figure out what are all the different directories that we have access into, all right? So this is a way for us to very quickly be able to uncover all those different accessible directories of a remote device. And this time around, you can see right here, we're targeting two ports. So in this case, port 139, 445, a specific IP address and getting the service version of it. So we are trying to look out specifically for certain vulnerabilities in a target device. And we get a result. And with the result right here, we can go ahead and say, look over for this potential exploit in say Metasploit that can allow us to go ahead and possibly gain direct access over into the computer. So you can see right here, I am on Metasploit. And all I got to do is say enter search 
followed by SMB. All right, so we can see lots of results. I can also search for a sunbar. And over here, we can use a specific exploit. Again, you do have to test out several of these exploits and see which one of them would work. So you have to read a little more, understand a little more, and see what's going on. So in this case, we will use exploit multi sunbar user map script. So let's go ahead and enter use eight, hit enter on that. All right, so we have here the default payload, which is CMD Unix reverse netcat. Enter show options. So right now, all we gotta do is quite simply enter set our host 192.168.0.212. So this is the target IP address. Hit enter on that. And right here, you can see under the payload options, we have already set the payload, which is LHOST, which is your call Linux or the attacker's machine. In this case, we're 192.168.0.117. L port, the listening port, of course, in this case, we have 4444. Four, four, four. All right, so once you're ready, all you got to do right now is go ahead and enter exploit. Hit enter on that, and we'll see if we get a result. Starting or start a reverse TCP handler, command shell session one open. So we are in. I can enter print working directory. I can, I can enter who am I? We are in. It's game over. Enter LS. We can see all this different information right here, which means that we have now remotely controlled the device.